I like naturalness, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's the thing I liked about Loev. If he likes a thing, he's just going to put himself into it. Mm-hmm. What was your first encounter with Louis? I heard him when uh, he used to run on the steamboat from uh, New Orleans to St. Louis. That would probably be the SS capital, I suppose. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's when the blues were new. There's always some motivating force that directs my attention to composing some particular number. And one day at noon, I heard a minister speaking to a crowd on Broadway, and he was chiding them for adulterating goods and merchandise and food. And they're adulterating everything. And I said, they're adulterating love, even. Mm-hmm. Because I'd want to write this little thing that Louis did, Careless Love, as we used to play that down in Alabama. Yes, indeed. I went back to the office, caught a train to Chicago, mm-hmm. where Louis played with the Erskine Tate's Orchestra. Vendome Theater. Vendome. Mm-hmm. And I sat down and wrote loveless love, and mm-hmm. used the terms that people were using then in the days of milkless milk and silk to silk, mm-hmm. uh, orchestrated it and carried it into Tate. Tate played it, and I sent it off and had it printed and printed these words, the loveless love that Louis sang. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I did loveless love and Aunt Hager's blues, and Louis used to draw large crowds every night singing just whatever number that he wanted to sing. Mm-hmm. But I had some very pleasant experiences with him in Chicago at the, the Vendome Theater. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that at that time the public realized what a great artist Louis was? They came that year, him play and sing. Mm-hmm. They realized that it was something different. Mm-hmm. But they went to hear Louis sing, and I don't mind telling you, there was something in that voice that they appreciated, Mm. the pride of race. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the feeling about Louis in the Vendome Theater when I went there so much.